The tranquil seas shimmered under warm sunlight as the Serenity Star luxury cruise ship glided through the ocean. It had left the port in Israel, and the next stop would be Cyprus in the Mediterranean. It would take as much as six days to get there. The passenger manifest was teeming with people from all walks and classes of life. Fortunately, it was the summer season when people were more likely to go on vacation, and the ship crew was constantly kept busy on this particular cruise, especially at this time of year. At least they were grateful to work despite the economic downturn affecting Europe. However, tragedy struck on the fourth day of their voyage when a male passenger, Mr. Richard Hamilton, was reported missing. The crew and fellow passengers frantically searched the ship, but their efforts were futile. His wife reported him missing the next morning. He had simply left their bed for fresh air, or so she thought. But he never returned, and she had drifted off to sleep again. One day later, the news spread like wildfire. Certain biologists had caught a shark for a study. They hoped to catch it and then release it after placing a tracker on it for scientific purposes. But they weren't ready for what they discovered next. They realized the shark was acting strange and had ingested something it shouldn't have. So they gave it a laxative suited for sharks. And then it puked up a wedding ring and some human bone fragments. It was then that it all came to light. Aside from the fact that this would ruin the experiment, they also felt disgusted. But more significantly, the shocking discovery of Mr. Hamilton's body within this same 18-foot shark shook the ship's passengers and crew to their core. The initial theory of a tragic accident quickly faded away as unsettling whispers of foul play and murder spread among the shocked guests. The ship's captain, Captain Sullivan, ordered everyone to remain in their rooms and not even think of attempting to disembark. They had a day before they could get to the next port, and it was a tense 24 hours. Mr. Hamilton's wife had it the worst because her emotions were everywhere. Captain Sullivan had graciously dispatched a few crew members to be with her and comfort her. Meanwhile, he had called upon the authorities on land to investigate the mysterious incident once the ship had berthed. Upon the ship's mooring, a certain detective named Sarah Lawson took charge of the case. She was a seasoned investigator known for her sharp instincts. She assembled a team to question the passengers, seeking any shred of evidence that might point toward the truth. This was as big as it got regarding police work, literally and figuratively. Aside from having to question hundreds of passengers and subsequently sift through all the testimonies and evidence, the case was also a big deal in the eyes of the public. The entire manifest was brought in for questioning one by one, creating an atmosphere of tension and uncertainty aboard the ship at the end of a rigorous session of eyewitness testimonies. The suspects were narrowed down to those who may have had direct contact with Mr. Hamilton in the last few days the ship was sailing at sea. Among these suspects were an enigmatic couple, the Parkers, who had shared a table with Mr. Hamilton and his wife, Emily, throughout the voyage. There was also a disgruntled former business partner, Mr. Roberts, with a history of animosity toward the victim. Additionally, a secretive artist named Miss Davis, whose eerie demeanor raised suspicion, found herself under scrutiny. To be sure, they were presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. As for Sarah, she was all too glad to have gotten to the meat of it all. Now, she could shine by doing what she was best at. Her deputies and junior officers had done all the sifting and presented her with the few who ought to be followed up on. Meanwhile, Emily Hamilton, Richard's grieving wife, was left to grapple with a whirlwind of emotions. The sudden loss of her husband and the harrowing circumstances surrounding his demise weighed heavily on her heart. She found solace in the ship's chapel, where she sought comfort amidst the storm of uncertainty. They were both in their 60s and had decided to do something different for their anniversary. They had come on this cruise against their children's wishes, and now look what happened. Emily didn't have the heart to call their children and tell them the sad news. However ridiculous the thought was, she preferred they hear it on TV. She was so heartbroken that she didn't want to talk with anyone, not even her immediate family. The truth was that the blame partly fell at her feet because they had planned this trip together. This weighed heavily on her and made her grief a little more painful. So she was here before the raised cross to recover her spirit and pray for her husband's soul. Even though it took a while, the investigation reached a pivotal moment when a random and almost insignificant clue popped up. 
An observant deckhand reported a sighting of the colossal shark near the ship during the fateful night of Richard's disappearance. This was strange to him because sharks were not known to be nocturnal creatures. And so, guided by this crucial lead, the authorities, with the help of the marine biologists who had spotted the shark earlier, embarked on an intense search to locate the predator again. Equipped with advanced technology and unwavering determination, they tracked down the shark that had consumed Richard Hamilton. When the team found it, they suddenly realized they had been dealing with an anomaly all along. This particular shark had never been in the open sea, but had been raised in captivity. They knew this because they were marine biologists, after all. What they found next astounded them even more. This shark originated from inside the cruise ship. Someone had smuggled a shark tank on board and then released it into the open sea when Mr. Hamilton disappeared. So Sarah retrieved Mr. Hamilton's phone and checked the call logs, but found nothing. Then it occurred to her to check his social feeds. When that didn't produce anything, she checked his internal company messenger. Emily was helpful as they tried one password after another until they cracked it. Right there, it was clear. Mr. Hamilton's last correspondence was with Mr. Roberts, who had called him onto the same deck where he was last spotted. The shark was supposed to be a diversion to suggest Mr. Hamilton slipped to his death and was subsequently eaten by the shark. Mr. Roberts confessed to the crime and implicated two other deckhands who had helped him smuggle the shark on board to release it when the time came. This turn of events brought Emily some relief. Her husband had been himself to the end, and he died an honest man. Irrespective of the harrowing events that unfolded aboard the Serenity Star, they would forever remind her of the fragile nature of life and the resilience of the human spirit, especially that of Mr. Hamilton, her husband. A team of intrepid deep-sea explorers, led by renowned marine biologist Dr. Samantha Reynolds, embarked on a groundbreaking mission to explore certain uncharted underwater caves in the Caribbean. Armed with cutting-edge technology, they set their sights on the mysterious abyss beneath the ocean surface. Perhaps this was the fabled Lost City of Atlantis. They reckoned they might even encounter an underwater civilization of mermaids. Everyone would laugh out loud at this joke. They boarded the boat in Cuba that would take them there. Their captain was an old, reliable man on the verge of retirement. He hoped this would be his last trip, which had more to do with his take-home pay. It was the biggest he had ever collected, as this was a scientific expedition sponsored by a university benefactor. They sailed for two days before getting to the shores of the Bahamas. Just off the coast was an isolated atoll. Suffice it to say, an atoll is a ring-shaped island with a body of water in its center. One can trust that it's a rare and beautiful sight to behold. Once they landed there, they proceeded to unpack their gear. They suited up in preparation for a deep dive. Once they had checked off the safety parameters, they jumped into the water. There were four of them in the water, while Dr. Samantha and another assistant were on the surface, monitoring the data and the footage. The captain stayed on the ship and remained on standby. As the team descended into the depths, the true magnitude of their mission became much more apparent. They swam for a while as the underwater caves eventually revealed a mesmerizing labyrinth of intricate tunnels. For them, it all amounted to an intriguing network waiting to be explored. Their underwater mapping was right all along, and these were indeed hidden and hollow passages deep in this part of the Caribbean Sea. Their excitement at the findings filled the air as they ventured deeper oblivious to any ancient force that might be lurking within. Unbeknownst to the explorers, they had just now intruded upon the domain of an ancient and highly territorial shark species. The disturbance occasioned by the presence of the divers triggered a chain of events that would awaken these guardians of the deep. Fueled by instinct, the sharks began their relentless pursuit of the intruders, thus transforming the underwater labyrinth into a hunting ground where a deadly game of survival was at play. This turn of events had completely surprised the divers, and they hadn't anticipated any dangers or been prepared for them. On the surface, Dr. Samantha became extremely anxious but kept the lines of communication going for what it was worth. Now more or less trapped within the treacherous shark labyrinth, the team found themselves in a race against time. The contraption delivering much-needed oxygen to their bodies was some cutting-edge tech that didn't require an external canister. 
but even that could give in at some point if they were not careful. It depended on the surrounding water being free from debris. It also required that they swim slowly, which was becoming increasingly difficult with the sharks on their tail. As of the last count, five sharks had locked onto them and were bent on having them for brunch. With their limited resources and being surrounded by cunning predators, they had no other options. They were now more than ever damned to rely on their wits, resilience, and deep-sea expertise to outmaneuver the sharks and escape the ever-narrowing passages. Amidst the chaos, an unexpected alliance emerged. While on the run in a desperate bid to find an exit, if they could get past the marauding sharks, the team discovered an injured killer whale, which was separated from its kin. It had probably come into contact with a stingray by accident, so it was rooted on the spot until the divers found it. Recognizing their opportunity, they attempted to forge a fragile bond of trust with the killer whale. With Dr. Samantha in their ear, they nursed the orca back to health, and in return, it acknowledged them and their predicament. Killer whales, like dolphins, are known to be friendly to humans. On the other hand, they were known to prey on sharks. So the setup was a fortunate coincidence. The killer whale became their guide out of the caves and their protector. No shark dared attack them now as they proceeded to swim to safety. But you can trust the sharks to fancy their chances. Undoubtedly, the orca was outnumbered one to five. But it bravely fought to protect the divers and had raw strength. Occasionally, the divers helped by knocking on the sharks' noses when they came too close. Ultimately, everyone got away as they closed in on the surface. With the little strength and resolve they had left being tested to the limit, the team reached a critical juncture. The sharks had followed them all the way up, and if they weren't careful, they might turn their attention to the killer whale as their consolation prize. It helped that the orca was half mammal, so Dr. Samantha and her team decided to adopt it in the interim. They borrowed an improvised tank from the ship where the orca would be allowed to stall until the shark's danger disappeared. They were simply returning the favor. After a few hours, the danger passed, and they released the killer whale back into the water and returned to civilization. Against all odds, the team emerged from the labyrinth of sharks, battered but triumphant and they would forever remain changed by their harrowing experience. Just as well, it was a story they could certainly tell their grandchildren. In the picturesque coastal town of Havenport, life takes an extraordinary turn as a mysterious phenomenon unfolds. Like clockwork, every night at the stroke of midnight, enchanting melodies emanate from the ocean's depths. The hauntingly beautiful music drifts through the air, captivating the townsfolk with its ethereal sounds. And it could very well be angels singing. But really, where could the sweet sounds be emanating from? As whispers of an ancient legend resurface, weaving tales of a rare and mythical breed of singing sharks that have risen from the depths. The townsfolk are mesmerized by the notion that these aquatic creatures possess the ability to create an enchanting symphony using their unique vocal cords given to them by nature itself. So much so, intrigue and curiosity have gripped everyone's hearts. Driven by a deep desire to witness the wondrous spectacle firsthand, a brave group of divers emerges from the community. These simple souls are determined to delve into the ocean's depths and unravel the mysteries that lie beneath. And if they succeed, it would be the first time that these subspecies of sharks have been documented for the sake of science. With their diving gear and hearts filled with excitement, they set out on an unforgettable journey. They make up a group of five divers in a mid-sized boat just off the beach at Haveport. Two will carry underwater cameras, while the others will carry handheld sonar detectors. One more person will carry a spike to be used as a weapon in case they need one. They all jump into the cold water with the weight of expectation. As the divers descend into the enigmatic underwater realm, they are greeted by a vision of ethereal beauty. Vibrant coral reefs, schools of exotic fish, and the gentle sway of seaweed become the backdrop to their audacious quest. Yet unbeknownst to them, a foreboding presence lurks in the shadows, waiting to reveal itself for the sinister entity it represents. This is in stark contrast to what the divers are hoping to find on this adventure into the deep. The divers approach the location where the captivating melodies are said to originate, However, their expectant smiles quickly fade from their faces as they discover the truth. 
The singing sharks are not the benevolent creatures they were led to believe. In a cruel twist of fate, these majestic predators have embraced their dark instincts and become ruthless hunters, which usually lure unsuspecting prey with their alluring songs. In other words, this is the shark's way of drawing in potential prey. The first thing that crosses the minds of the divers is, where is a marine expert when you need one? This discovery also betrays that they are amateurs who impulsively decided to check out the singing shark phenomenon on a whim. And what was meant to be a quest for musical enlightenment is quickly transformed into a fight for survival. The divers now find themselves entangled in a deadly dance, desperately evading the razor-sharp teeth of the once enchanting singing sharks. Consequently, their courage and resourcefulness are now being put to the ultimate test as they dare to navigate the treacherous waters while seeking an escape from the jaws of the predatory symphony. They aren't even shark experts, to the point of having a basic knowledge of how to evade underwater predators. The person with the spike barely even knows about the shark nose trick, and the divers are outnumbered by a factor of one. In the face of the imminent danger posed by the circling sharks, the divers now realize their only hope lies in working together. They must dig deep into their collective pool of sheer determination and strength to outsmart the cunning predators. The group must dare to form a united front against the mesmerizing menace lurking nearby. They have to think fast, and in that same vein, someone accidentally gets the idea to reverse the frequency on the handheld sonar devices. To everyone's surprise, it works like a charm because the sharks become disoriented. The frequency emanating from the devices jolted the shark's senses, similar to the unpleasant feeling of human fingers screeching across a classroom chalkboard. The sharks are easily and quickly dispersed. Fortunately, the divers have gotten it all on camera. As they safely emerge from the water, they couldn't help but feel incredibly grateful to be alive. Their story becomes a cautionary tale, never to allow oneself to be fooled by nature because, at its core, Nature is not a respecter of its admirers.